People love playing with me, but hate it. When I play back, what goes around comes around. minute to spare because it's so much I just want to get right into it. Hi everybody, how are you today? Happy Monday. Monday. Yeah. Can you, right. can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. All right. Uh, we got a lot to talk about today. Today is going to be the first day of a segment I call stupid shit. Okay. It's just the stupid shit that goes on in the internet that I don't get a chance to talk about because I ignore it because it sounds so damn dumb. But now I want to talk about that. We're going to talk about stupid shit. And then we're going to uh, talk about Diddy and his son, Quincy. That That's serious. And then we're going to talk about my girl, Serena Williams. Ooh, why y'all doing her like that? How you doing why? that? Well, why? They, they, it's the public. Okay. They always try to drag Serena. And now when she tries to fix herself up, you know, calling her a lion. It's a mess. But anyway, uh, let's start with last night. So last night, I specifically told Perry, I thought it was a dumb idea to uh, do a, a watch party. Okay. I don't have to agree with everything he says because he's my husband. That was a dumb idea. Okay. He goes, he goes, forget you. Let me do what I'm going to go. Go ahead. I'm going to the mall. I ain't got time for the nonsense, Perry. I ain't got time for it. So uh, he went on and he did it anyway. I came on later on because I was trying to watch it while we were at the mall on my phone and seeing there's some things I wanted to say. And so uh, he did, the, did it and it was really fun. I'll give you that. Right, right. But YouTube took it down. <laughs> so it just, it's not funny. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, Perry. Oh, no, it's quite okay. I mean, because you know what, though? At the same time, I hung out with Perry Peeps. And, oh, the wow. you know, it was okay because I was going to watch it anyway. Mm -hmm. So why not hang out with some people while I do it? It's just. Perry can't stand it when he made a bad decision. I no, I mean, we had fun and we fine with it. It's just, it's the haterism of it all, right? Why can't you just come on and say, hey, honey, you know. Because I won't. I bet I've been wrong most of my life and I'm wrong again. <laughs> That's all you had to say. But most of my life? No, listen. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. You hear me say it. Yeah. I, I mean, you had never admit it. Anyway, listen, me and Perry have a very unique relationship and it, it's been working for us. We've been married how long now? Almost 34 years. Okay, 34 years. And I usually, first of all, I don't read my comments. Perry does, V does, other people do. And I feel like if it's worth me knowing about it, then they'll come and tell me. But if it's bad or dumb, they'll just erase it in half time. I don't even know what you said. But when Perry had the video taken down, I had to go to the page to see if it, why it was taken down. And so I was, we only had two comments before they took it down, right? And so I'm reading one of the comments. I wonder if I could put this on the thing. No, I don't want to out the person. So I'm reading one of the comments and I'm going to read it to you guys. I don't know why you don't let Perry do his thing. When he came up with the watch party, you thought it was a dumb idea. I thought it was brilliant. Your kind of people put him down all the time. That's my opinion. When he grew his beard, his gray beard out you got jealous <laughs> and went and bought a gray wig no way he gets and went and bought a gray wig and i think you cut him off all the time please you're i know you're kind you are a jealous woman okay um let me keep going 
it shows on camera. Let him lead as a man. Everybody lo loves him, Sherelle. Uh, you be hating low key. Do your thing. Do your thing. Something catch it live. The opinion are, I don't know. They didn't type the last part out. Now, listen, I don't even acknowledge the nonsense. But this time I do, because I think it is cultural differences and not knowing us personally. But I'm not the kind of woman, with all due respect, that does whatever Perry tells me to do because he's the man. And I know some women do that because that's a part of their culture. That's not my culture. I do what I want to do. That's number one. Number two is people think Perry doesn't work and this is his only job. Didn't I tell you guys that Perry let me be a stay-at-home mom for 25 years? Never had a job outside of volunteering. Perry has his own source of income, okay? He also has several streams of income, and one of them is real estate. If anything should happen to Perry, I know how to run real estate by myself. As a matter of fact, I brought him in for the YouTube channel. Do I need to explain it? I did this for two and a half years without Perry. I don't need Perry for that. I need Perry for a partnership. And sometimes the stuff that we're saying, we're just laughing, making fun, pulling each other's leg. I have no reason to be jealous of Perry. He has no reason to be jealous of me. The way we run our household, we put all our money in the, the same bank and we spend it. So is Perry mad at me? Am I jealous of Perry when I drop that $30,000 cash in his damn bank account every month? It's the dumbest shit I ever heard. Cut it out. But it comes from these other cultures who really believe in, you know, you got to do what the man say. My best friend was Iranian. She was raised like that. Girl, you're in America now. And all women don't do that. Like most women don't do that. If I got to do everything Perry tells me to do for me. That's not a damn marriage. And I am totally capable of ideas by myself. How's my business run? It's Perry. It's me, my mother, my son, and my cousin. And sometimes Perry comes up with a good idea. Sometimes I come up with a good idea. Cut the nonsense. If that's how you want to run your household, cool. But I don't play that over here. Okay? I don't need Perry for no damn money. Or nothing. He's my partner, not my master. And so, you know, I understand for some of you guys, this is foreign. And I hear that a lot of other cultures don't like American women for that reason. But we speak our mind. And, you know, to say that I'm jealous of him because he had a dusty ass, gray ass <laughs> uh, beard and it made me run out and go buy a, a gray wig. Ciao. It's the first, it's, so, it's nonsense. So with all due respect, if you think that I don't listen to my master, AKA Perry, AKA Marvin, AKA William, AKA Lloyd, cause you know, you can give <laughs> all his names. <laughs> Get out of here with that. A real family are not divided by something so superstitious, so superficial as attention. When Terry, when Perry wins, I win. Y'all don't understand how teamwork makes the dream work. Girl, I wish he would try to tell me what to do. So cut it out. That's how it goes down. And if you can't take it, well, you know what to do. Yeah. What are your thoughts on people saying that I am jealous of you? I'm <laughs> sorry. What, what, just all that. What did you think of that? Uh, I, I think people, how we go back and forth with each other. We're Most joking. People, I know, but, 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 okay. Basically, I think in a lot of households, it's not that way. Mm -hmm. Me and you've been this way since we met. Mm -hmm. We always go back and forth. Mm -hmm. Nothing's personal. But I think they see you on one side, me on the other side. When I, we say something, they may think, oh, well, did they really mean that? Mm -hmm. They don't know how we get down off camera. Child. Mm -hmm. okay. And we go all the way out with it. But... <laughs> Got to taper it back a little bit on here, but I think then people will say, "Well, you don't let them talk." 
sometimes I'm just trying to just jump in in a conversation. Half the stuff for real people. I just come on, my wife come on, do this show. We're gonna talk about that. Some of the stuff I don't know nothing about. So I don't say nothing. If I get a chance to say something, that's what I do. Uh, you know, but can I ask you a little bit? Was it the sexy gray? No, but listen, and then people <laughs> always say I cut you off. Yeah. I cut him off for several reasons. One, he knows there's certain jokes that we can't tell on the internet, but he forgets he's on the damn internet and talking like he at home. That's the one reason I cut him off. Two reasons I cut him off, because sometimes he needs to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes he needs to shut up because this idea don't make no sense to my ass. And I'm allowed to say, shut up. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like, oh, if I tell anybody to shut up, my sons, like, shut I don't tell my mom to shut up, but I might say, that's ridiculous. Like, right. And basically what you're saying is that, you know, a lot of times you don't understand mm -hmm. what I'm going to say. You might shut me up or not understand. No, sometimes you, you say stupid shit. Well, in life, it goes like this. And I don't want to offend nobody when I say this. Not even you. But I think you're good with it. But the whole thing is this. You got two types of people in this world. You got Perry's peeps. Oh, wow. I can't. And you got Sherelle Riders, right? <laughs> and fortunately, when the big bus got full, <laughs> some people had to get on that small bus. <laughs> that would be the Riders. Oh! <laughs> wait, so, wait, this is a joke. He doesn't disrespect people that call themselves Sherelle's Rider. It's a joke. Well, baby, and we real, on the yellow bus, boy. You on I the yellow bus? It. I embrace it because I don't want my wife to be alone on that small bus. I can't. <laughs> I don't. Perry, you're adding to it. Stop. I mean, y'all are there singing that song. What's your favorite song? <laughs> the wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and. <laughs> Let me move on. Uh, right. Let's move on pretty quickly because what I want to get to is the P Diddy stuff because it was quite fascinating how I discovered what was going on. And so, listen, some. Sometimes you have to ignore people. If you know something's not true, just ignore it. Now, you guys know the other day, Shannon Sharp put a little thing on his social media. He was going to a, a selling, a signing at a wine, a wine liquor store. Not li like a liquor store, like yeah, yeah, a wine or something, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I don't even have time to put up the tape. And so everybody was making fun of him and reenacting it on social media because they said that he when he got out the car he looked gay <laughs> that's ridiculous <laughs> they've been dragging him and the reason they're dragging him is for a couple reasons one they're jealous of shannon sharp he's been on youtube uh, uh just a few minutes and he's already the number one interviewer Winning. He made millions of dollars off of the Cat William interview and the Monique interview. And they're jealous. If they're that upset, how come not, nobody's coming for Cat? They act like Cat don't exist. Because you know if you go for Cat Williams, you're going to get the heat. Mm -hmm. So people always want to take out the weakest link. Shannon, ignore these people. Stop coming and responding i'm not gay do you know oh there anybody an explanation no he don't it's none of our business and, and you know and that people you know well look at him he looked like this if i was standing sharp for real i would get out my suv shake my ass right into the bank i wouldn't give a damn <laughs> okay <laughs> he needs to stop people are gonna hate it's undercover hate. And they're just jealous because he came in and did something that bloggers have been trying to do for decades. And he came in and he can get the interviews and he does them good and he gets them to open up. So y'all need to leave Shannon alone. So that's one of the stupid shit I wanted to talk about. Uh, Measure Man said, uh, people shut me up all the time. I be in the chat. I get a text message, LOL. I want to be on both. I go on <laughs> both buses. I go on bus to support her, LOL. Child. Right. I mean, Measure Band said he not only go on the bus to support you, he's a rider. He also is the driver. <laughs> Come on, let's go. You can't say that. You can't say that. No, I mean, <laughs> you don't mess with I mean, certain people know. Yeah. Child. Anyway, I wanted to talk about that. Um, I want to talk about Serena Williams really quickly because I got to get to my main story. 
Serena Williams, I love her. I really, really do. <clears throat> and, oh, how do I say this without being offensive? You She's can't. not what American men, oh, this is going to sound bad, typically call cute. That sounds bad. Doesn't that sound bad? It's the truth, though. I mean, I, I'm show, I mean, sometimes we got to just be real with the shit, you know. <laughs> they say it's, she's yeah. muscular and, you know, they say mean things about her looks all the time, right? And so if you're a weak person, it makes you self-conscious, mm -hmm. okay? That was the worst way a man can get to a woman. Talk about her looks, okay? So y'all been crying and complaining, and uh, she don't look this way, and she don't look that way, and she gave in to the pressure. She gave in. That's how I look at it. She gave in to the pressure and got something. I don't know what the hell she got done to her damn face. Oh, First, my God. I love you, Serena. Please, just listen. Just hear it out. You look ridiculous. Respectfully, people always people are just naturally negative people. It looks like she's lightened her skin. Yeah, something's wrong. And, and just just look at her. I ain't gonna play it. Did she must have got her lips done? And she looks Asian. Yeah, it's something about either she either bleached and then figured she was too light, and then she went into the tanning booth. <laughs> Something, something ain't right. And then the lips and stuff. I'm just saying, like, that's why women, sometimes you get to say, you know, men grew up, no means no. Sometimes women need to understand that. If you ain't looking the way you want to look and you decide to go in here and get these procedures, sometimes no mean no. Don't. I, I mean, mean, they don't always come out the best way. You know, a lot of people get plastic surgery and you're allowed to do whatever you want. But then now they, when it turns out bad, you get the backlash. And they are just dragging my precious Serena. I love her. You guys, I feel like you guys have pressured her into this. And now it didn't turn out right. I don't know. Me personally, I just feel like, you know, all that plastic surgery and stuff like that is overrated. And I guess some guys might do it. But, but women, listen up. You know, you got guys on the scale from 1 to 10. Right. But guys ain't out here doing all this stuff. And these women do not need to do it neither. Well, Perry, yes, they do. Let's just be real. No, I mean, maybe just, just a little. Don't want, you little just don't want to be. On. Look, put a, it's cheaper. Put a little foundation on. <laughs> slap on the wig. Then shake your hair. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you are messy. You are messy. Look, I just feel that when you do it, you take a risk of this happening. Uh -huh. And that's why I won't do it. I got to age sometime. I'm not going to do it. I'm not in my 20s. I'm not trying to look like I'm in my 20s. My precious Serena. Anyway, I want to talk you. about. You ain't, going that, out. You, hmm? you ain't going out like Madonna? Not to not to knock Madonna or anything that she did. I'm just saying. You can't uh, stop. Stop. Get it, get it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, let's move on to a uh, uh, topic that's under stupid shit that goes on in the internet. I want to talk about Natalie Nunn, okay? And I got to make this really, really quick. Natalie Nunn, according to Stunna Girl, Stunna Girl was on the, on the cast a couple months ago. Natalie Nunn is like a producer at Zeus, okay? She's also on the show herself. She's also trash, okay? Mm -hmm. And I mean that in a respectful way, no disrespect. You've been trashed since Bad Girls Club. Mm. This is what they do on Zeus, okay? But now Natalie is having a so-called affair on her husband. And she came out, I wish I could have played the tape, and said that, uh, you. I don't care if you tell. My husband and my daughter already know. And that's disturbing that your daughter, a seven, eight-year-old, knows that mommy's having an affair. Yeah, Second of yeah. all, girl, stop lying. And fourth of all, if I'm if there's a, such a thing as a fourth of all, nobody cares. You cheated on the bad girls club. You are a no good person. Okay, you're a bad look for Zeus. For some reason, you have managed to convince them that you need to be on the show yourself, and you just divide and conquer. You encourage fighting. 
making them girls make a fool out of themselves. You done beat up poor little Scotty more times than I can count because you beat her up off camera too. Let's not forget that part. And Natalie Nunn, I just think you're a terrible person and you're trash and I don't care that you're having an affair. I just happy that you, that man's going to leave you because you're no good. You're just no good to, to your core. Okay. And you know, and I don't care if people, if you're a Natalie Nunn fan in the chat, talk about, Oh, Sherelle, you're a hater. I'm a Natalie Nunn hater. She's trash. And nobody cares that your family's breaking up and no one believes that lie that your husband already knows, you know, and I don't feel for, sorry for you, husband, who pretend like you were a football player on the Bad Girls Club and you're not. You're living off of Natalie Nunn's money and you know this is what she does. Yeah. Period. Just one Natalie, thing. Natalie don't feel like she cheated. I mean, she came out here publicly and said she had home approval <laughs> from her daughter. And, oh, her and then she said, and even if it was crossing the line a little bit, they was officially on a break. <laughs> That's called a that's called a divorce. It causes a divorce. Let, let me just she's this such she's so low maintenance. She is ghetto. And what she does is give black women a bad name. But you're not really black. Now let's remember that. Because you only claim it when you want to claim it. Just like Sarah said. So I'm not gonna claim you either. The black people aren't gonna claim you either. You're just from a different culture and you're all screwed up. You're just a bad person. And, you know, go ahead and cheat with these men and they're going to use you for your money because all of them think you talk too much. Is that bad? That video. <laughs> it's just moving. All right. Let's talk about PDD really quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel so bad for uh, PDD's son, Quincy. Let me put a, a picture of him up here. He's not... Diddy's biological son, but he raised him since he was a toddler. Okay. So I'm talking to another blogger who I share information with, and she's saying to me uh, that Quincy is scared of his dad, scared. She used that word, scared of his dad, and really caught in a bad situation because his dad, LB Shore, said that Diddy is responsible for unaliving his mother, Kim. And I started laughing and I said, why would he be scared of Puffy? That don't make any sense. I said, he probably just thinks, you know, one dad is mad at the other thing. And she said, no, she, he's mad. At, he's scared of Puffy because Puffy's history. And I said, well, with, with the women? And they like, no, for putting his hands on men. I said, send me the record. Send me, like, let me, let me read it for myself. Look, look, look. It's about 10 damn pages. Damn. It's about 10 damn pages. And I never put two and two together with Puffy. According to the rumors, he goes around paying off witnesses, paying off cops, got politicians in his pocket, and that's why the regular public is not familiar with all the things that he does. That's why he has gotten along for gotten away for so long with the things that he's done. I wanted to go over this list. Did you want to say anything, Perry, before I get started? Oh, oh no. I mean, but uh, okay, just real quick. Did he kid that was Quincy, right? Mm -hmm. but, but that's his step kid, but I'll be sure, right? Well, you can't say step because he oh, never oh, married. Okay, okay, right, whatever, whatever. But so is Justin his real kid? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. Justin right. and uh, the Christian, and then the girls. Okay, okay, I didn't know that that Pimp Junior was actually his real kid. And Quincy's actually a nice guy. He he really is. Let me get to that in a minute. <clears throat> okay, so let me read you the things that Puffy has done in his past. That Pimp people probably don't even know about. Okay, in uh, 91, when he was an intern at Uptown Records, right? There's a woman, her name was Liz Gardner. And I'm going to use the word, because they're so funny, um, touched. But it's the same thing that he did to Cassie. 
it's the strong R. Y'all know what I'm talking about? But uh, YouTube's getting very funny about these you can topics. Say it like the fruit. You can say it like the fruit, maybe. I don't want to say it like okay. the fruit because I don't want it to get right. misinterpreted. Right. So I'm just going to call it touched. But it's way worse than touch. It's what Cassie has also accused him of. So it's a lady named Liz Gardner. And this was when he was a uptown at Uptown Records. And she said that Diddy and Aaron Hall touched her for hours why other people watched mm. and Aaron Hall came on and kind of vouched that it did happen. He was like bragging about how good he is. And, and, yeah. and if he wants something, he's going to take it. Right, right, right. That's a disgusting behavior. But anyway, that was in 91. Also when he also that same year, he assaulted a girl named Joy Dickerson. I, I can't. Uh, same claims as Cassie, same cl claims as Liz Gardner. He's going around touching these women, but this one was a little bit worse because they said he taped it and then he let everybody in the office see the tape. Mm. I never knew none of that. I just knew, no, we won't stop, don't stop, get it, get it. Something's wrong with him, okay? Then... They said in, and he got fired from Uptown Records because Andre Harrell said he was getting too cocky. So he goes over to Clive Davis and secures him a deal with uh, Clive so he could create Bad Boy Record Company. Bad Boys, that's what it's called. But the rumor is he had to do favors to Clive to get the deal. Now, I never knew that there was rumors that Clive and Puffy was having an affair. Now, Clive Davis never said that he was by until later on in life. I don't think it would be maybe his 70s he said it. That's what they're saying. And that's where that rumor came from. Because they're saying he always gave Puffy special privileges. Sad. That's what they, and I never heard about well, maybe, this. Maybe it could be true. Maybe that would could have turned him out, you know? Also, there was a name, uh, a guy that worked for the New York Post. His name was Shane Emenheiser. And uh, Puffy was at a club one night and he seen him in VIP and he just took a picture of him. And Puffy and his bodyguards went over there, roughed him up, broke the camera. And he says, Puffy pulled a G-U-N out on him. Hmm. There's something wrong with this man. He was found guilty. And had it dropped, okay? Uh, in 98, oh, they say that when he would have these all-white parties, he, uh, have you ever heard about these all, and only the who's of who is invited? Right, right. right. After mm -hmm. the party, then the free calls began, and the free calls began in 98? Mm-hmm. It was all, and you he knows, say it again. Oh, no, I was saying, yeah, the all-white parties, where they all come dressed in white. Yeah, I've seen yeah. them time and time. And after the show, they just start playing with other things that's white, allegedly. But go ahead. I can't. I can't. In 99, he was arrested and charged with two felonies, charged with second degree assault and criminal mischief. He had a partner that he worked with in the business. His name was Steve Stout. They got into a disagreement. He said that uh, Puffy touched him or or mm -mm, with a telephone, a bottle of champagne. Damn. And a chair. Oh, he just totally whipped his ass, didn't he? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. And a chair. And was looking at two felonies. He really should have been placed in jail because when you... Break a bottle over somebody's head. Ask the brat. She had to go to jail for that. That's serious. That could really injure a person. But instead, he paid the man $500,000, a.k.a. a half a mil, to drop the charges. He dropped. He took the money, dropped the charges. They didn't drop the case completely. They uh, gave him a lesser charge of harassment, and he had to take uh, uh, a one-day anger, man anger management class. One day. <laughs> 
This I, I didn't know some of this. This is how he's been getting away with the big M. He's been getting away with this. It's starting to we seem like know, we all know about the infamous the infamous night when he went out with Jay. J Lo and and the rapper his his protege named Shine he got into an altercation with uh, Shine's friend Scar and the witnesses said at the time it was P Diddy that pulled out the G U N. We also have Natanya uh, Rupert coming out just a couple weeks ago said I know who pow powed me right. Mm-hmm. It was P. Diddy. We all know that he offered to pay for Shine's de- defense, intentionally getting him a bad attorney. He gets the top of the top, Johnny Cochran, and Sh- Shine goes down and goes to prison for 10 years. He 10 had, years. He had the dream team and left his friend that supposedly protecting him and saving his life, gave him a public defender. <laughs> that, that's just wrong. It's, it's oh, yeah. just, just, I'm just talking about his history, his shaky history. In uh, 01, there was a, a TV host named Roger Mills. He sued him because he assaulted him. They got into it. He didn't want some questions asked, and he um, assaulted him. So that's it's a pattern. I'm going to keep going. It's a pattern here. Whenever you don't get your way, you clown. Mm-hmm. You want to put your hands on people. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and the guy was going to take him to court and then suddenly changed his mind. We all know what went down. Okay. We see the pattern here. Then in 03, it was uh, Huff, Harvey, Pierre, and a third unidentified person acclaimed of uh, touching a 17-year-old victim. 17. 17 at the time. She's been fighting to keep her identity hidden. And the judge just ruled that she has to come out and show her face. I don't know why you want to do that, judge. It brings up, it's it's like PTSD. Yeah. PTSD, if you have to relive this, but okay. Um, so that happened that he's on the hook for. Um, also in 05, when he met Cassie, you know, that's when the DV began. But one thing I didn't know that I found in the report is that uh, he dv Cassie so bad one time she had to go to the doctor, but the doctor reported everything to Puff like that was her next of kin. Mm-hmm. You're not supposed to tell anybody of uh, another person's health crisis or what they're going through because she was suffering memory loss from the DV. Mm. I'm not going to go what else he did to to uh, Cassie because we've been all over that for weeks, but it was ugly and terrible. Uh, also in 07, there was a guy named Gerard Reisner who alleged that Puffy punched him in the face and pushed his girlfriend and spit on him. Ooh, child. Outside of a nightclub named Teddy's at the Roosevelt Hotel, um, they settled out of court. Mm. Now, how many names have I named so far? Would you say six, seven? Yeah. A lot. Mm-hmm. In um, 08, um, in a complaint to the police, oh, in 08, he was doing this TV show called Making the Band. Do you guys remember the show Making the Band? I watched it. I it's remember him. That. Do you remember that? He had uh, Danity Kane and, and Day 26. And there was another guy from Hawaii. No one remembers him. But in Making the Band, one time he got into an argument with Lori Ann. And she quit. Do you guys remember this? Or he fired her, whatever way it goes. But they said MTV had to edit that footage. They said he t- put hands on her and hit her with a chair. Damn. A chair. And y'all seen all those people in that room and nobody said anything, including you, Michael Bivens. Also, in uh, 2012, they said that he blew up Kid Cudi's car because Cassie was trying to leave him. She started dating Kid Cudi. He blew up the car, and then he said, next time you'll be in it. I don't think he was playing either. I don't think he was playing either. 
uh, Revolt TV. In 2015, listen to this. I knew none of this. And if you guys knew it, I'm sorry. I'm Johnny come lately. In 25, 2015, his oldest son, Justin, the one they say is a spinning image of him, acts just as bad as he does, mm-hmm. was playing football for UCLA. They said, Puffy came to every practice, was on the field, calling plays, acting like he was one of the coaches. Now, Perry, you used to be a football coach. How annoying is this? Annoying as hell. It's annoying when they're in the stands. But (laughs) you get these people with these egos that do feel like, because their kid might be the best kid on the team or something, or for Puffy, he's the richest person out there. That's why he got his ego. But go ahead. So they said one time one of the coaches pulled his son out of the game because that's what coaches do. If they feel like you're doing good, they'll keep you in. If they don't think you're doing good, they'll pull you out. They said Puffy got so mad in the, what's the room it's called that y'all going to change your clothes? Locker room. In the locker room that he took a kettlebell, which is a weight, a weight that you lift for exercises. Mm -hmm. Assaulted him with that. And they said it was so bad that they called the cops. Puffy got arrested and charged with assault. Oh, there's a whole list of things that he got charged with. And they said that he was facing time for doing this. All of a sudden, the football coaches and the UCLA management team dropped the lawsuit. After they dropped the lawsuit, Puffy uh, posted a picture on his social media and saying we won and he had all the football players cheering him on Hmm. why would the coach that got the the short end of the stick to Uh be mild about it why would he drop that lawsuit because he was he's getting paid more than what he was cash yeah yeah a clear you know he can't take back the ass whooping so he he cannot find his pockets right it's it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. So now I see why Quincy would get upset with him. But let me go into an, the real reason why he's upset. So I don't know if you guys said that uh, knew this or not. If I'm Johnny come lately, but I just found out about it and I had to talk about it. Okay, there is a man named Ed Winters. Okay, when Kim asked, they said that she passed from a from a pneumonia. I believe it was called Lubar pneumonia. Let me see if I can find Ed's picture. She passed suddenly, unexpectedly. She was 47 years old. I read the autopsy. People said, she, yeah, she was sick, but she was getting better. In fact, she had friends over. They watched movies together. Her friends and the kids. She was walking around talking, laughing. Then all of a sudden, she just doesn't wake up. Permanently doesn't wake up. What did I do with his picture? There's a, a, a coroner. Let me see if I can find his picture. I, you know how I am about picture. His name is Ed Winters, and he's the person that did the first autopsy on Ken. Because there were several done. They said he put in his report that Kim did not pass from pneumonia because she had signs of a, a lung infection. She passed away. Because she was poisoned. Now, this is nothing I'm making up. Where is it? Let me put let me, let me, where my stuff at. This happened. This is a fact. So he labeled her death a homicide. He caused P. Diddy to tell them his findings. Now, why people keep going to him and he's not next to Ken, I don't know. Maybe he feels like. He in charge, and that's the person they got to report to. Mm-hmm. But anyway, he said, uh, he reports to P- Diddy that, no, she didn't die of a pneumonia. Because before they even said anything, Diddy was going around telling everybody she died of a pneumonia before he even gets the report back. Okay, so Ed tells Diddy, and guess what happens? Ed gets fired the next day. Now, he had been a coroner for 35 years. 
Now, all of a sudden, he doesn't know what he's doing. And when is the last time has anybody heard of a coroner getting fired? Mm. And people are real serious about their jobs and they know how important an autopsy is. This ain't something they take lightly. So they fire him. Okay. He's upset and realizes I have a suspicion that maybe Puffy has something to do with Kim Porter's death. Now, this ain't some other rapper talking. This ain't no jealous Mm ex-girlfriend. This is a coroner. So he goes to a judge, pleads and begs to get him to reopen the case. In the meantime, they get another coroner on there that says, no, 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 it's pneumonia. So they classify it as a pneumonia and That's it. They were shocked to find out that Ed Winters didn't stop. He had a bad suspicion. So he goes pleading to the judge and he says, I have evidence to support my claims. I'm not just talking here. And then he goes all into his science stuff and why did it? And he just wants a chance to prove it in court. Because my reputation's on the line too. If you get, go around saying you get got fired because mm-hmm. of Kim Porter, you didn't do that right. She's famous, so the judge grants them to reopen the case, and they know he's going to come with the facts. A couple days later, he's no longer with us. Wow. Also, you have I'll be sure the day that he found out that Kim had passed because he was told the day of, they hadn't even done a autopsy yet. He goes to social media and he starts posting. He says, I know for a fact she didn't die from a pneumonia. And he's crying, look at this. Do you guys remember this? He is crying. According to the rumors, he tells his son, who's who's damn 30, early 30s at this point. So mm-hmm. Quincy's not a kid. Quincy feels torn because he appreciated so much what Puffy had did for him growing up, took him in and treated him as his own and said, never treated him unfairly. Do you guys remember in 09, Quincy had wrote an open letter to Albie Shore. I want this open. To Albie Shore saying that you're not a good dad. P. Diddy's my my dad. And I love him and respect him. And I'm always going to look at him as my father. And you weren't even around. So don't even start talking. Do you guys remember this? He went to uh, Global Grind, which was uh, Russell Simmons' blog at the time. So he has a a deeper respect for Puffy than I would say his other children because he really feels grateful for the way that Diddy raised him, and he should. But now all this stuff is coming out about his dad and the stuff from his real father. I I keep calling Puffy his dad because that's what he calls him, but all the stuff is coming out about Puffy but his real father is saying differently. Friends around her, like Morley Simmons, is saying things differently. Mm-hmm. So they're saying he's been going through depressions lately and stuff like this, and that he's scared to confront his father. Now, after that record that I just named went down the list from Puffy and how he's just gotten away with all of this, I understand the fear. Because if you bring something up like this up, it's no telling how he's going to react. Right. And I do still understand that no matter what he does, that's still going to be your dad in your eyes, and you're always going to love him. Even though uh, everybody on the planet at this point is realizing something's wrong with the man you call daddy, the man we call Puff. So they're saying he's, he's experiencing lots of anxiety, lots of depression. And, and and even worse than all that, I don't even know. You know how usually I give people advice? 
Mm-hmm. I can't in this situation because I don't know what he's supposed to do. Perry, what do you think he's supposed to do? Well, shit. I mean, and when if 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 you have somebody treat you like a father, you're gonna respect that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, when you hear your actual father tell you that he could Puffy could have had something to do with his mother being being away. It, it it makes it hard because if it wasn't proven in the court, and then he's probably in, in the point where he's hearing what his daddy saying that he could have been involved, but Puffy was such a good daddy, he don't want to look at him as being that person. Maybe you know what I mean? Like he sort of told him because he don't want to believe Puffy would do that to his mother. Maybe, mm-hmm. but damn, I don't know. It's yeah. I don't even know what to do. So we y'all, if y'all know what to do, we can already take some calls because yeah, I don't know what I would do. I mean, I mean what would you do? Like, cause could I okay, say if my actual father say, hey, you know what this would happen, but it's really no proof. Like, you know, what I mean, hardcore proof. Do I turn against the person that actually treated me fair and raised me up? You know what I mean? It's it's a hard thing. To- and let's not forget, Alby sure wasn't around till the boy was an adult. Mm-hmm. Y- you didn't claim him. This is mess. Ain't this a mess? Yeah. This is a mess. And I have no advice for him. I feel bad for him. And then it reminds me of the other children going through this. Justin and 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 Christian, mm, I don't think they're so much affected. They were at the parties and they looked at it as fun sounds you know, sick Dustin enjoying it yeah dustin they said he's the worst they say he's the worst of them all but <sighs> it's a, it's a hard one for me it's a very hard i i don't know what to say um i just feel bad for that family because puffy while you're doing your stupid dirt and and being connected to unaliving so many people including tupac yeah didn't you think that this would affect your children? Your cocky attitude, the way you're hitting people in the head with weights. And then you got the team cheering you on like you did something great. He's disgusting. He's really disgusting. I can't with Puffy. I can't. So anyway. That's what I wanted to talk about today because I'm going, oh, here's the picture. This, this is shout out to Ed, Ed Winters. Here it is. Y'all know I love a picture. This man, all he was doing was his damn job. All he was doing was his damn job. And because he not part of your cover up, Puffy, in my opinion, this is my opinion. So I can't be sued for my opinion. He got to lose his damn life because I have a tendency to believe I'll be sure. He's not lying, in my opinion. He's right. not lying. This is a mess. This is a mess. And so how did- Most of this stuff is sort of believable, right? Because these people don't go missing mm-hmm. or go bye-bye until right, in, right as soon as like something important is going to happen. Like that the winner got taken him to court or um, his ex, ex-wife ex about ready to come out with a tell-all, right? Was it a tell-all? Yeah, they're saying that Kim Porter was writing a tell-all mm-hmm. and he didn't want things getting out. He didn't want the freak-offs getting out because according to the rumors, there are all kind of celebrities at the freak-off, okay? Mm-hmm. And he didn't want the fact that he was bisexual to come out. It's out now. And speaking of it being bisexual coming out, y'all need to leave Meek Mills alone. <laughs> He's stressing. They are dragging. Meek Mills, catch on. Stop talking about it. Leave DJ Academics alone. Let him do his job. But you're trying to fight him. That's going to make him report on the story more. And this is real really made you look bad. The last time you and Meek were going at it for about three hours, they were going at it for three hours on social media. People kept saying, But are you gay though? And you never answered. 
Stay off of social media and just leave it alone. You don't see Usher come and defend himself because we're going to ask him all kinds of questions. Just ignore it. Just ignore yeah. it. What do you think they, about their treatment of Meek Perry? Why? Why are they doing that to him? Oh, well, no. I, I, well, they, they doing it to him because his name was in the court um, complaint, right? Mm-hmm. Now, that don't mean it's true. But when mm-hmm. people come, you're like, oh, no, that, that's not true. And just move on from it. But he's reacting as if he's being exposed. So he's <laughs> making himself look a little guilty. Measure man, you know you're messy. You know you're messy. He said, quit asking me if I'm straight. He didn't say quit asking me if I'm gay. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh in anybody's sexuality. I'm laughing at the way Meek Mill is handling the situation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to hell. I'm sorry, Meek. Look, in my mind, Meek, you are by you and, and Puffy had some fun at the freak off. It was fun like it la- while it lasted, but it is what it is. You know, you just gave it the old college try. Now, did you like it? I don't know, but you know, you 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 were at the freak off. Okay, that's yeah. what the paperwork says. <laughs> also, the guy that brought the new complaint, uh, Little John. What is his real name? Uh, uh, Lil Rod, I'm sorry, Rodney Jones uh, is also allegedly afraid for his life, has gone into hiding because of this final lawsuit that he, in the lawsuit, mentions Cuba Gooding Jr. He mentions Usher. He mentions, sorry, Meek, he mentioned you. That's who you should be mad at, not DJ Academics. You should be mad at yeah. <laughs> Rodney. He don't want to put your name in the like, please. And if you're gonna be on, on online battling it out for three hours, then now you wasted our time and we deserve to know the truth. Now, now don't come back on unless you tell me if you gay or not, because I'm tired of these rants you're going to have. Not freak mills. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> you guys put in the chat what you think. Quincy should do. Poor Quincy. While your dad is having to freak off when any and everybody in the business. And listen, I'm not going to judge you for your sexuality. That it is what it is. But Clive Davis? (laughs) (laughs) Clive Perry, if you had to do some favors for somebody and you were uh, bisexual, would would Clive be at the top of your list? Oh, hell no. <laughs> but he did, I mean, you know, look, but he could probably figure, hey, it ain't going to take that long, right? I can get this cash and move on. Uh, somebody, boss lady's advice for Quincy is run, child. Y'all are messy. Messy. Meek wanted people to stop talking if he was straight after an accident he was in. Oh, really? His car looked to be totaled. Oh, I hate that he was in a car accident and the the car was totaled, but he worded it wrong. Stop asking me if I'm straight. Nobody was asking you if you were straight. We were asking the other thing. Have a reading with Sloan. Oh, hmm. consult with an attorney and get all his ducks in a row. So this person is saying, Perry, Mm -hmm. uh, you have to accept the truth if if this is true. Right. And you have to be prepared to, to testify in court or go to court or you know, some kind of legal battle. Um, so what they're saying is you have to ride for your mom. Mm. What are your thoughts about that, Perry? Well, see, this the whole thing. Like, where would he start from? Like, is no court proceeding going on? Do he go back and just try to pull it back up? Do you think that he going to actually get the answer now? Because the, the important people are now missing. So him going back to try to rehash it, I don't think he's going to, you know, get nowhere with it personally. Because once he go and hash it back out, he ain't saying, hey, let's find out who did this to my mother. Mm-hmm. He basically going to say, hey, I think he did it. Or are, 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 are you asking, should he maybe get the case reopened to see who 
Yeah. 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 They gonna say it the autopsy, it was natural, right? Mm -hmm. So um, no, they said yeah, she died of pneumonia. Lubar. Yeah, right, right. But yeah. natural causes, right? What they mm -hmm. call it or something like that. Yeah. But what I'm saying is to reopen it, it's not gonna be reopened, I don't think. Unless you got proof of somebody doing it, and if they would have had proof, maybe it wouldn't have been natural causes back then. Stella says Quincy is torn because his intuition is telling him it's the truth. Oof. He is struggling with the truth and loyalty. Yeah, because Puffy, that's been his dad. Mm -hmm. I say Quincy should listen to his gut feeling and his biological dad. Al has no reason to lie to him. This, this is true. What would be the point, in my opinion? Oof. Well, and that's the hardest part for Quincy, that he had to go through the rest of his life. Always wondering. Mm -hmm. Because I, I don't know, think it would be the answer, right? That he'll get the answer. But always, did he, did he not? You know what I'm saying? With mm -hmm. no resolve. Here's a good one right here. Samuel says, he should get more information on Puffy to have more of a confirmation for himself. That's right. You can't just start accusing him of something just because your dad said it, your real dad says it, but you have to verify everything that Al said. Verify that the timing of Ed Winters did, were there two autopsies? There are, and, but just don't just listen to the bloggers investigate for yourself. Uh, I missed my place here about his mother's treatment and death. Have it recorded and videotaped and get with his father, I'll be sure. Everybody's saying you got to ride with your mom. Uh, I'm praying for Quincy. Luck, the other person said, I think he really knows the truth deep. Oh, like the other person said, I know. I think he knows the truth deep down, but it's a hard pill to swallow. Mm. Right. Mm, mm. Mm. Quincy has seen and knows a lot. He already knows the truth. Mm, maybe. Oh, let me take one more. I hate to say it. <clears throat> if that person coming at you about Perry had some true points. <laughs> oh, my God. Inez, what are the true points that the person uh, about Perry was telling me? What do you think the true points are? Um, because I, I'm, I'm not. Mm-mm. I don't have to do everything Perry tells me to do. I'm a grown ass woman. Uh, didn't Puff make Al be sure sign his rights over? That's what I heard. I heard that. What else did I hear? Uh, it was something else that I forgot. Yeah, I I heard that too. That he did that. Like, mm, mm. he may be in fear of his life if he tells the truth or try to investigate. You know, for me. Personally, I said it before, I'll say it again. I believe he's responsible for the unaliving of Tupac, especially because you got a man in jail named Keefe D who's saying Puffy did it. He set mm -hmm. up the contract. Also, you have a detective, police detective, that said Puffy did it. And as soon as he said it, he got fired. What's his name? Dead David Craig, something like that. I'll have to do a deep dive on that. So this is a mess. This is a mess. Any good words, Perry? Oh, uh, yeah, no, my phone was ringing. Um, oh, I didn't look, know. I mean, the bottom line is this, though, for real. Quincy's in a bad spot because, yeah, he could be fearing for his own life. And then people's mm -hmm. like, oh, because P, P. Diddy ain't going to go down for no one. Mm. No mm. one. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he ain't go down without fighting or trying to get over, right? Mm -hmm. So if his son did that, you know, and opened it up and went through it, and they can't prove P. Diddy did it, then P. Diddy going to make him feel less than for the rest of his life for basically accusing him. So he's sort of in a bad spot, you know. Yeah. Uh Bubble said, don't forget about Biggie. We ain't forgot about Biggie. I, I wonder what was the initial reason that he wanted Tupac gone. Is it competition? Did he know something? But you can't tell me any different. When a police detective tells me that P. Diddy's responsible, he's mm -hmm. responsible. 
It's just sad. All of it is sad, sad, sad. Uh, Douglas recommends to Quincy, get off social media, go somewhere secluded, and when strong enough, face it and live his life. Right. Well, right. Yeah, because that's his, his Huffy, is, he looks at him as his dad. He's never going to stop loving him. And this is Diddy's mess, and Diddy needs to clean it up. And don't take it on. Respect him for the nice things that he did for you, but realize he's not perfect and he's a very disturbed individual. <laughs> he really is. Uh, somebody said uh, Tupac was competition for Diddy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This is sad, Jealousy. sad, sad. Anyway, any other things you want to talk about? Uh, that's about it for me. All right, you guys, uh, we will be coming on every day this week. I probably will come in on talking about, what did I call it? The stupid shit list? Because we got to get that done. The stupid yeah. shit list yeah. is here to stay. Okay, guys, we'll see you next time. Perry, take us out. Fuck this Bye, shit, everybody. I'm out. Bye, everyone. This shit, I'm out. I'm out.